Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm always glad when you do each week. We've got a great program planned for you today, and you want to stay tuned. In just a few minutes, we're going to get caught up with Threads of Hope Ministry in Kenya. And what they do is amazing missions work and how they train uh, the people in Kenya um, in sewing, and they have sewing centers around the country, and how they share the gospel. So if you have a heart for missions, you want to stay tuned for that. But before, before we get to Threads of Hope, we're going to take some time today. If you've been watching Bay Focus for probably the last, oh, seven years, even though we've been doing the show for 22, you've met this young woman, Brooke Rathmel, who has been our reporter for the show and out in the community. And we are going to be talking to her today. And can't believe I'm saying this, saying goodbye to her, Brooke Welcome and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, welcome and goodbye. Right. No, uh, I no, I, I just, I cannot um, tell you what an incredible impact uh, you've been for this show. Um, but before I get too sentimental, um, I, I do want to tell our viewers that this is just a great opportunity that Brooke has to take the next steps in her life. Yes. And work so well with her family and everything that, that God has brought her way. But she has been here for seven years. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I know. But tell our viewers how you started. Cause well, you, yeah. yeah, so I actually was an intern here. Yeah. Uh, when I was like a junior in college, so I was just like 21 and then graduated and got a job offer to come back down to Florida. I'm originally from Maryland, so I flew down here with just a bunch of suitcases, no family, <laughs> and started working uh, on Bay Focus yeah. and a few other things here at CTN. Yeah. And seven years later, you know, I've met my husband here, which is that. just so a great, you know, CTM will have a special place in my heart because of that. Uh, he was an editor and he worked on Bay Focus. We yes, go on remote yeah. shoots yeah. and uh, that grew into a relationship and we married in 2018, which I know we showed photos we from did. that yeah. from that wedding. Um, so it's just been amazing working, working at CTN, working on Bay Focus, going out into the community, doing those features. Um, it's definitely a, a, you know, a really special part of my job here working on well, Bay Focus. Well, you know, and I, I, Brooke, I saw you, you know, I have, I have to say, you know, I've been in this business years, a yeah. uh, long time, yeah, yeah. and I just saw a lot of myself in you and coming out of college. You came with a, a skill set right out of college, and, right. and I remember those, those days for myself, but you came here and you learned a lot of things. You've been a reporter for Bay Focus, but you've done a lot of on-air work for other things here. You've been floor director, uh, editor. You you have done so many different things, and I saw how how you just expanded your skill set. You do freelance work. You do so many different things. Right. CTN um, was really a launching yeah. pad for me yeah. um, in my career. It was the first job I had out of college, and I learned, like you're saying, so many aspects of what it looks like to work in production and to work yeah. in TV and in media. But you have given us um, a presence out in the community. We used to go, I've done a lot of um, report, reporting in the community myself, having a news background and all the years we used to take the show on the road here. Um, but you've been our eyes and ears and it's been so nice having you to send out. Have there been, before we get into this week's, before we get into this, your final piece, final which I gotta feature. say, you have to stay tuned for this. It's like her best oh, ever. You're so, so kind. touching. It was a great it's story. so touching of a piece. But have there been some highlights and uh, oh, show, goodness. Uh, pieces, that, places um, you've been that... Yeah, uh, so let's think. A special one. So I've, I'm like, love animals. We did a feature yeah, yeah. Um, with a Christian organization, a therapy dog ministry, and we went to a, um, a hospital there where it was pediatric. Yeah. So we were working with uh, where they work with children, and Gracie was the dog on site that day, and we did a feature on the ministry, the handler, yeah. and, and Gracie, the um, Labrador Retriever. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing to see the interactions that she could have with these children. Yeah and you know young adults in this in the state that they were in and just the laughs and the joy that Gracie brought and that ministry really is touching and I think extremely important so that was a great feature to work on um, we've covered a lot of concerts yeah since being here a lot of um, Emily Arena with Winter Jam and so on that's um, really fun to those do are so fun because yeah. we get that backstage access yeah. um, we're like right there on the floor with the artists and um, yeah. a lot of the camera opera you know the videographers that I bring with me they love going on those yeah. 
<laughs> because they get that access oh, yeah. and uh, it's, well, it's a I, lot of fun. You know, I remember it and, and then we're going to head to the piece for yeah. today, but I, you have done the gamut from including featuring uh, ministry and organ, an organization and ministries. I want to say that because Bay Focus tries to partner even with um, community organizations right. that may not necessarily be a ministry base, oh, absolutely. but they, but they do great community work and they, and they, they uh, connect with the faith-based community. But you've done some things that, you know, kids that, that have options to have a birthday party. Right. They have celebrate cancer, birthdays. Celebrate yeah. birthdays. Mm -hmm. the from everything from that to the, to the fun pieces, uh, Clearwater Marine, talk about animals, Clearwater yes, Marine. Clearwater Marina. Marina. Yeah, there have been winter. over the, over the seven years, there have been so many different things, but this set us up for this last one. And before we go to it, Brooke, I just want to say on behalf of all of our, oh no, I think I'm going to oh, cry. No. <laughs> I can't feel like it. <laughs> on behalf of the staff here at CTN, all of our of our Bay Focus viewers, what a treasure you have been. Oh, thank you. All the input, you know, the work you've done here at CTN is going to be different um, than you would do pot potentially at a, in a secular setting. It's right. still important to have Christians and people that are that are Christ followers in all segments of society. But what you've done here, because we are a 24-7 get the gospel out network, right. what you have done here has, has created lifetime, eternal, fruit That's so true eternal reward eternal thing for the kingdom of yeah. god and i i just want to thank you for that this will be this this is you you've made a, a difference here i appreciate you made a real that. difference no, that's amazing. set us up for this piece it is just wonderful oh my goodness so a local business the regent they got these wedding dresses just out of kind of the whim of of where they were at, where they were received all these wedding gowns, and they decided, let's do something really fun with them. Let's give them away to people that have been, excuse me, affected um, the kind of the heroes of this COVID era that we're in right now. So healthcare yeah. workers and teachers, and these people have been receiving these wedding gowns. I mean, can you imagine? I know for me, that was a big if fun to have to yeah. pay for this wedding gown yeah. and um, for our wedding, and so to be gifted a wedding gown. Um, is just incredible and to people that really do deserve it. So this piece is featuring oh, yeah. them and a special teacher that received a wedding a wedding gown recently. Okay, let's take you wanna stay tuned, and watch this and it ends ends so beautifully. Let's take a look. A local business gives away free wedding dresses to healthcare workers and teachers in the Tampa Bay area as a way of saying thank you. It's just like dress up and it's yes. but it's a dress up for your biggest day of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon Kyle, the CEO of The Regent, a wedding and events venue, is a true modern day fairy godmother to these soon to be brides. So it all started about two years ago. Um, I got them from a local boutique called Satin and Lace Bridal. A friend of mine, Allison, she was fixing to donate all these demo dresses and we we're like, wait, no, don't just give them away, let's do something. So he's like, who, who do we give these to? Who, do, who deserves them? And so we started talking about it with healthcare workers, you know, so the first round of this was nurses and healthcare workers and people that worked in the hospitals and the medical industry. And it went so well, people started donating more dresses. And, you know, we started saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to do it again? Well, who else had to pivot? Who else had to do things differently? And who else is having to function because of the thing going on, you know, this, this COVID thing? And so teachers and educators. The nomination started coming in from Hillsborough County educators, and of those selected was Jenna Rose, a fourth grade teacher at Riverview Elementary. This dress means that she gets to marry the man of her dreams, and it's her fairy tale. And we just get to be a little chapter inside of it. You know, this part, I get to wave, wave the wand, wand, and she gets to sparkle and shine from the head to toe, <laughs> you know? And so it's one of those great moments. So to see that sparkle and shine and her to be excited just makes me my heart happy and makes me happy to see that happen. It means so much. It makes me feel like I'm so special. Um, and, you know, obviously being a bride, you already feel special. And now that I'm getting a wedding dress, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cinderella, huh? And her students also couldn't be happier for her. Oh my gosh, my students know and they talk about my wedding every single day. They're like, when are you getting married? And I'm like, guys, I told you yesterday, you know but they are so sweet. Their genuine joy is what makes this process even more fun. But for Jenna, because of a health diagnosis she received at 19, this day may have not even come. I found out that I have what's called um, factor V Leiden, which is a clotting disorder. Um, 
So blood clots started forming in my lungs and in my legs, um, and they were so bad that I almost passed. But luckily we caught it in time. Um, the doctors worked their magic. I had to go through four surgeries um, to disperse all of the blood clots from my veins, and here I am. It's amazing. You know, everything happens for a reason, and I'm, I'm so thankful, as twisted as it may be, I'm thankful for the blood clots because, you know, if I hadn't had that health condition, I wouldn't have gone to the school that I did on the year that I did and met the man of my dreams. And for Shannon, her desire to give back to the community has become bigger than even she ever imagined. I'm a preacher's kid. And I was always taught, you do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And I knew that God had these steps ordained way before than I could have ever have imagined. And he knew that this was gonna be path in the journey I was gonna take. And this is just a piece of my story. And I'm so glad that I got to share it with others. And I want people to see what we're doing, just like the dresses that keep coming in, because people say, I wanna be part, I wanna be part. All those pieces and parts are because we lit a little ember, and now it's turned into this like brush fire. <laughs> and people want to be part of that. And so all those little pieces, it doesn't matter, Those are that's how we continue this, and that's what we get out of this, is others to see it want to do something too. To find out more, visit experiencetheregent.com. Reporting for Bay Focus and Riverview, I'm Brooke Rathmel. Well, thank you so much, Brooke. What an, what an incredible story, and thanks to the Regent for providing us the access. What a heartwarming story. Uh, and, and thank you, Brooke, so much for all your, your faithfulness over the years here at CTN. Well, we're going to change directions now and show you a ministry that literally is taking the gospel in unique ways to uttermost parts of the earth in terms of missions work, uh, particularly um, in, the, in Africa that we have highlighted over the years, but there's more locations that they're at too. Um, but we have had on a number of times over the years, and we're going to get updated because it's been a while since we've had Al Barrett, who is the founder of Threads of Hope ministry and we're going to explain threads of hope in just a minute al thank you so much for for coming back on the show it's, it's been a few years and and you know and you haven't been sitting still there has been so much you've been doing but you know we have some viewers that don't know what threads of hope is at all please explain what the ministry is yes uh, thank you darlene for having us back on again it has been a while and we've um uh, of course been well aware that god's still at work no matter uh, yeah. the difficulties we've all been through in the last few years, but uh, it certainly uh, is, uh, yeah, has kept us busy. We're a sewing ministry, as you know, mm -hmm. but others may not. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a way that we equip, we equip and train widows and orphans how to sew to earn a living. It started in Africa in 90, 98, and uh, uh, it has grown to uh, 27 countries over the over the years now, we're at 25 years of doing this. Uh, we're based out of, uh, of Florida, Dunedin, uh, where we receive donations of sewing machines, fabrics, threads, and what have you, related materials. And we have various ways of sending them out to places uh, and do the training. So um, it, it, over the last few years, we've had some exciting things happen. Uh, uh, even though that we've been struggling with uh, the conditions that we're in. Yeah, the worldwide well, pandemic. Uh, yeah, it makes it a little tougher. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, it just brought to mind, uh, I used to pray for a salvation for every stitch and all the sewing machines that we've sent out over the years. I always thought in my mind that that was an awful big order for God, you know? Yeah. The salvation for every stitch. And then when COVID hit, I think every 19,000 of those machines were sewing masks. All yeah. of them, everywhere around the world, where we we. Yeah, we're going in just a few minutes. We're going to see a picture of that yeah. as well. But, yeah. but explain to our viewers too, because you've had, you know, as we've had you on over the years, we've seen different things occur, including um, the build, building and of sewing centers. Tell tell us where mm -hmm. those are. Yeah, it all started in Kenya in '98, and uh, some years later we managed to, because we've been working in the wilderness, going from village to village throughout Kenya. And, uh, and our heart has been to reach unreached people and to help those churches to, 
to expand their ministries within those areas. So um, we eventually made better progress by putting a building. And we raised funds and we put a building out in Masai Mara and made a sewing center there, uh, a sewing training center. So in, in, in 2013 is when that got built, 14 is when it got opened. So we're in its 10th year now of training in that sewing center. Yeah. And meanwhile, bringing teams to Kenya every year for 20 years, and up to that time, we established other areas to do training in orphanages and other uh, uh, through church facilities. So uh, we've established uh, 11 in Kenya and, and several over in Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania as well. And, and we did the, on those trips, we'd go to those places. Okay, so you are, you're not only doing the sewing center, but you're partnering with other ministries right. to train them to get them. Mm -hmm. And one big ministry that you're connected with, explain the connection with Missionary Ventures yeah. International. Yes, we, we, uh, my wife and I, Gail, by the way, she just retired yeah. from the... Uh, New Life Solutions New, for New many Life years, pro-life ministry. Yeah, and she's quite busy, uh, still yeah. involved in missions and, and on a, serving on a couple of boards and what have you. She made them, uh, quite a few trips along with us, but she, uh, she ministered to women in, in the fashion that she ministers. Uh, and, uh, and so her calling has been in a little different way. Uh, so we always say we have a his and hers ministry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, your question was uh, the... Missionary Ventures International, what the partnership is with them. Right, we're still a partner with Missionary Ventures, yeah. but we do have our own 501c3 as well. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so that continues, and we're allowed to not only just serve with Missionary uh, Ventures uh, missionaries, but other missionaries throughout the world. So we have that freedom, you mm -hmm. know, it's great. It's been a good partnership. Yeah. So um, we've accomplished a lot in that way. Uh, partnering with them. So mm -hmm. we have an account there, an account here uh, for our mission funds. And then you've done some things too um, there in Kenya, I believe with, with a hospital. You've done, right. you've worked with with, with um, people there that have battled addictions. Yes. Um, that's all part of what you do too, right? I mean, yeah. in the churches, it, helping with, with building churches. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've had, we started wearing some other hats yeah. along the way. <laughs> And our sewing center, being in Maasai land, is on a piece of land that was established by a, a doctor that we've worked with for many. For he's been in Kenya 40 years, and and building uh, clinic, bush clinics, and what. And he built a hospital right behind our sewing center. The Maasai uh, uh, that have this land as a community-based organization gave us two acres up on the main road where our where our, our sewing center sits. And uh, they're making, uh, as they learn, they're making uh, school uniforms and, and local kinds of dress and what have you. Other centers are making some of these, which I'll show you yeah. something. And um, <clears throat> bags and whatever. But uh, that center uh, now is in its 10th year, as I say. And uh, they, they did have to close, the government closed it down during COVID for one mm -hmm. year. We continue to pay those, yeah. our staff, because they had no way to eat, you know, yeah. we just uh, kept them going. Okay, um, and that, so I wanted to mention those mm. partnerships. Yeah. In just a moment, we need to, we're, we're gonna start going um, a little bit faster pace through the interview now, because we have a lot of things we wanna show our viewers. Mm. But tell us quickly, what's you gotta, you're trying to get into, and you are getting into Cuba. Yes. Tell us about Cuba. Cuba is uh, exciting because the door has opened and closed over the years. We've been opening in Cuba for yeah. over 20 years. And as I said, it opened and closed. Now it's been closed for a few years, but just in the last year, we've been in a, we've been able to send machines down here again, um, which we, we we can't really jeopardize the uh, mission by getting too detailed. But it's just exciting as yeah. all get out to get the machines there. That's huge. They, we've sent uh, close to 30 machines down there already, wow. and wow. Uh, in a in a little uh, town. And the, and the pastor in this church has asked me, could he call it Cube, Threads of Hope Cuba? I said, by all means. Oh, wow. So soon, uh, we're, some of our colleagues will be going down there 
to follow up on this uh, that's, personally. That's just awesome. What a door um, open. Okay, let's go, let's go to some pictures mm. that you're going to tell us what we're seeing, because this really tells mm. the story mm. of what you're doing. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Tell mm -hmm. us what we're seeing. We'll have to go this, pretty quickly through this these. Is, um, yeah. uh, this is in Maasai Mara in Kenya. Uh, this is our sewing center that we built. That's the building you see up front and then behind is the... Uh, uh, is, a, is a clinic, a, a woman's mm -hmm. maternal clinic. Where they're, it's open now for almost two years, and uh, they they uh, they can do uh, yeah. uh, cesareans there. That's our sign up front: Western toilets and Wi-Fi available. I love that Western toilets and <laughs> Wi-Fi. Massive amounts of people. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that's on the road where yeah. tourists go, so they do stop. And now that little area is, is it's in a wilderness. And I'm telling you, 10 years ago, there was nothing there. It's a village now down the road. It's been expanding over the years. There's mm -hmm. some uh, students. Uh, those are recent ones that have come to learn. Uh, they, we continue to stay in touch with them. That's a young man with Down syndrome. That's in an orphanage outside Nairobi. Um, over the years, they've trained many. Uh, a couple from St. Lucia, very exciting. They've started a center down there. We've equipped them with quite a few I machines. And it's exciting to see them take hold. It's gonna cover the, the Caribbean and that area. <clears throat> and uh, uh, their outreach is big, really. They, they have a, a Bible a college. Contact, that is. Yeah. The girls uh, from an orphanage outside Nairobi, and those are dresses they made with the, after the after the first week of yeah. training. Gail and there and, you are with your lovely wife, Gail. Uh huh. Gail and I in front of a young lady in an orphanage up in Nakuru, uh, which is a, a, a wonderful outreach by one of our local missionaries here. And she's the one that's made the bags you'll see here. Now they're making garments as well. Yeah. Yeah. Those, look at those colors. Uh huh. It garments yeah. and and they're doing beadwork too. This is uh, uh, Saint Lucia, uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, this last year, few years, we sent machines in both those those places. Uh, again, in in Africa, in Maasai land, we've gone from village. And that's to, this is what I wanted to show. Those are the masks that they were making for the yes. pandemic. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. Places everywhere. This is a graduation, um, and that's a that's a pastor there uh, handing out the certificates after the one year training. Uh, the tuition there is five fifty a year per student, and sometimes uh, folks will will uh, uh, help us. Yeah. You know, with that tuition, they can sponsor. Uh, someone to go through the course and uh, they yeah. can get jobs or well you know and mm -hmm. that gives our our viewers an overview and in mm. just a we're I'm going to ask you one final question just a moment but we're mm -hmm. showing we're showing these things on set too mm -hmm. these are all made yes by in in the Maasai land in Kenya all of them uh, these are made in the Kuru uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah in Kenya mm -hmm. okay so they they are literally and then they they market these and sell yes. and support themselves. Right. I just yes. I love it. Yeah. The, these are these are some of yeah. this is uh, uh, made on a loom. This part here, they do all the quilting themselves, and yeah. um, these this is like a laptop bag. I just this and is that's beautiful. A, uh, yeah. Uh, you, just the colors. The, the, yeah. Of this, this one's leather. Yeah. And, um, wow. And that one in your hand is for iPad. And of course, uh, yeah. This this one, this one. I know this is my favorite. Yeah. They're all, I mean, this is like just stunning. <laughs> Go and, everywhere. And that and that, would, that you could take anywhere. Yeah. Okay, um, Al. Let me ask yeah. you, um, our viewers. You know, um, and you have a history. Obviously, you you um, work work in making canvases and everything for sh for mm -hmm. boats and all this. Yeah. So you have such expertise um, that God has really caused you to do this incredible ministry. But this takes resources to to do what you're doing around mm -hmm. the world. How can our viewers help you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what's your greatest needs right now? Yeah. Well, always prayer and. Uh, 
and that support is always important to to us in any ministry and to each other, for each other, and those we serve, and and uh, we always pray that that will reflect back to them as well. Yeah. So we need financial support for operations, and particularly for for projects and like sending machines. It's always costly uh, thing to do, and. Uh, and, and some of the projects, we identify those. I don't have particularly numbers for you right now, mm -hmm. but if anybody's interested, they could call me and talk about what we got going yep. and uh, to be a little more specific with yeah. that, with yeah. them. Now, but just financial donations right now would be mm -hmm. big, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be, mm -hmm. that would help enormously. Yeah. And they can yeah. give through the Threads of Hope uh, yes, they website. can give through the website through Missionary Ventures. We're having a little issue with PayPal right now, but we'll, yeah. we'll get that uh, straight so out pretty Ventures soon. Yeah. And, and, but, but they could run them through that way, and, or uh, they could mail them to our address that's okay. on the uh, website. Okay, and we're going to end mm -hmm. on that note. Al, thank you so oh. much. Uh, this has been just to get caught up to see what God is doing. Uh, you have not slowed down one, one bit, <laughs> not a bit. Um, God, yeah. it work. And stay tuned on the screen. You're going to see again how you can contact Threads of Hope and how you can uh, donate to, uh, to what they're doing as well and find out more about the items that they're, they're also making. And, and stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Bay Focus. Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Well, I hope you can support Threads of Hope Ministry and also want to thank the Regent and Brooke Rathmel for her final report on, on Bay Focus. Uh, it was so inspirational. Um, and thank you for tuning in each week. Keep me up to date on what's going on in the Tampa Bay Central Florida area. Check in with us on social media. I'd love to hear from you. And we will see you next week. May God richly, richly bless you.